Hey guys, uh, today I'm gonna do a quick video of a proper installation on a Mazda 3 and how to properly do it because a lot of guys like to use shortcuts and I'm gonna show you how to do it the right way. Alright, so let's start on the video. So first things first, oh sorry, so first things first, the cowl and the windshield wipers, they have to come off. If anybody tells you, oh, you could do it without taking them off, they're just cutting corners. Proper installation is factory OEM installation is without the cowl. So don't listen to anybody. If you get in a windshield replacement or you want to get a, your windshield replacement and you don't know what's involved, first step, wipers off, cowl off. All right, let's do that first. Okay, so the reason the white cowl has to come off is you can see right here, you see the old outline, I mean outline of a cowl that's here, it's like an inch that it sits, the glass sits under the cowl. Now if you have the plastic, the cowl here, and um, you're trying to install the windshield, there's no space, it's like this much. So there'll be no space for the urethane to sit and then you have to put the glass on top of it and you can't put the glass on top of the urethane which is right here so you'll have to slide it and smear it now except the urethane it has to be like nice straight beat that will be just smeared and that causes the problems air leak that's number one problem second problem if you miss the urethane you smeared it too much now your glass could be sitting on the metal you hit the pothole and it might crack the glass here somewhere or also what could happen when you hit a pothole the glass sitting too close to the dashboard and it's you know grinding against and making a grinding noise so that's why you want your installer always take the cowl off proper installation without cowl a lot of guys they'll do the cheap install and they'll cut the corners without taking this off and except we're doing the job in an hour it'll be like 35 minutes but this really takes 10 minutes maybe five minutes to take it off all right let's get to the next step so my next step is i always pull this molding off the glass because new one comes on the glass the reason i do that you get a gap here so you could you know slide the blade between the glass and the pincher without scratching anything and it'll be nice and smooth you'll have a bigger space so less risk of scratching the surface and that's what you don't want to do you don't want to scratch anything because scratches they'll cause rust and problems so let's try to take this off all the way around Now between the glass and the pinch wheel, the side there's a dirt that's built up over time. So when we pull the molding, there's a gap and there's a dirt. So what I want to do is vacuum it first. So this way, when you take the glass out, it don't fall in the car. You know, because mess in the car. So let's vacuum that first. All right, so it's clean. Now what we gotta do is cut the windshield 
and I'm gonna use for a cut a zip knife this knife here I mean this this right here is a standard tool very useful this is what I've been using for uh, 10 years now but I just purchased a zip knife very convenient very easy to use and it has a good control so this is very you know reliable but it costs a lot more money all right so we do right now I'm gonna slide this blade here see it between a glass and the metal so we could cut the uh, urethane still attached so the blade was a long enough you always want to start with a short blade so it's easier to cut if you start with a long blade you'll get stuck so you start with the short one which is got most of the urethane so now the corner I'm gonna take the longer blade so this is a half inch this is a three quarters of millimeters so I'm gonna use this for the corner try to get the corner and this tool is very easy to switch places, just slide right in there and you're ready. top and the sides are released see that's it it's cut off that's the urethane right there that we had to cut so the bottom since the urethane is here and there's like two inches between the you know from the edge of a glass to the urethane we won't, won't be able to get to the glue so we use the uh, my little tool that I have to cut the bottom let me go get it So what the tool does, it cuts from inside, cuts the urethane, and since the blade is so long, it's easier for me to reach the glue at the bottom and without scratching anything. So you have to spray with the water, or soap water, so this way it's a little lubricated. On a dry glue, it gets stuck, it gets hot, it gets stuck. Right here I scratched a little bit and I think that's it well right here a little scratch it's the tool I got it too close uh, right here 
right here. I scratched it a little bit. And that's it. So, problem with these scratches. If I leave them like this, open, there you go. If I leave them like this, so next year at this time, there will be a rust building up here. So it's going to go up and down. It's going to eat the metal. They might cause problems. And the rust is going to get under the glue. And then it's going to be attached. It's going to be a leak. And in case of accident, the glass might fly out because the surface is rusted. So what you want to do is, and what installers should always do, is prime these spots. So you want to prevent it from scratching. And you want to be careful not to scratch, but nobody's perfect. Here and there, a little scratch, it's fine. So let's go get the uh, primer. All right, so that's gonna dry for a little. I'm gonna go clean the glass and get it ready for installation. So I'll see you in a few. All right, the glass is right there. I'm gonna go clean it. I was use this to clean the surface where the urethane connects with the glass. to make sure that you know it's, there's no grease in it, any dirt on it. Alright, so the urethane that I'm going to use for this is Sika P2G Plus. It's four or five hours dry and the car you see is going to be here till the end of the day till six o'clock. So I could use that glue. Alright, so I'm going to use V-shape. I know I made a video, it doesn't really matter which one you use. For, for this one, I'm going to use a V-shape. Just so everybody go crazy when they watch the video. It's all set. Ah, that tape's coming off. Why is that tape coming off? Because it's a little wet. Harder. So you see it's nice and straight. The old molding, it matches the original molding. Trying to do as straight as possible. Try to get to the look that it was from factory, the original look. If customer says, oh my God, looks, it looks like it hasn't been changed before. That's a compliment. There you go. Let's go look inside. All right, what we got inside? See? Nice. No glue anywhere. There, there's glue. No? There's no glue. Nice and clean. All right, so windshield replaced. This is for uh, people that are looking for a windshield replacement. When you're looking for a windshield replacement, first thing you want to do is do your research. 
look at the Google Place, look at the uh, Yelp Place, see what the reviews they have. If they have 10 reviews and one is bad, nobody's perfect. Everybody, you know, make mistakes. If they have 10 reviews and five is bad, they're not doing something. They're not doing something right. You know, they're doing something wrong. So you want to stay away from them. All right. I hope this was helpful. This video was for uh, customers that are looking for a windshield replacement. I know this professional glass guys. They're gonna look at this video and say, "Hey, I know how to do this." But all right. <coughs> Peace.